had some connection with the Anglican Church. We sat down um, people who believed in Islam, people who believed in Christ, people who believed in uh, anything you could think of, and we were all kind of in the same boat together. But it was interesting how it was those that had some faith, um, who had the time too, no doubt, who were there helping. And, and to me it's... This as is a private institution. Well, private what institution? The one you were visiting was... I was visiting a detention centre run by the government. Um, people who came to us, or still, it's, it was a policy brought in by the Labor government and continued um, under the Liberal government and continues to this day. And now we take people to Christmas Island. And I'm going coast. to interrupt you, and Anne, for a moment. And a sorry, I interrupt thing. everyone just mm. for a moment because we actually have a question mm. uh, that's coming up that, uh, that actually leads us in similar directions. But you're watching a special politician free edition of QA answering the big philosophical questions. The clock is ticking. Let's move to our very next question. It comes from Joel Brown. Uh, my question is to uh, Mr Hitchens again. Um, how do you account for the uh, good work, uh, specifically regarding the title of your book, uh, Religion Poisoning Everything, uh, the good work done by uh, religious aid organisations overseas in third world and developing countries, as well as um, locally um, on our own shores and I'm sure in, in your country uh, with the homeless and the needy? Actually, That's Christopher, can I interrupt? Before, I, before you answer that, think about your answer for a moment, because I, we haven't heard from Sally Warhaft. I'd like to bring her in and then go to you. Uh, I think this gets into the whole question of... of uh, the whole argument about whether or not, you know, God is great or not great, and Christopher's argument, obviously, um, in his book, to me, what, what's missing, and I think what Waleed touched on, um, is, is that lived experience of people is, is much more varied and, 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 and great and personal um, than the, the kind of things that you can pick out to make a case against God or that, um, you know, God is somehow missing from a, nas a great disaster or tragedy but he's there in a, uh, in, in a miracle. And I, I just think that, um, you know... He's, he's, the lived experience of, of people who are, are religious uh, is, is it's part of what it is to be human, it seems to be, um, for a great, great many people across time. And I don't think it's something that's going to go away. Christopher. This is why, in the, towards the tail of the last question, I asked the lady from the Sydney Institute, uh, whether these Anne. institutions she's talking about. I'm Anne. <laughs> well, I don't know you well enough yet. I'll just introduce myself. Perhaps I'm Perhaps we'll be more bonded by and the end of the Some would say not much of a lady. Could be, we'll, be more, <laughs> we'll be more intimate by the end None of the None of us would say that. Well, I know people who would. <laughs> It's just, it's just not the way oh, I was brought up. Yeah. Perhaps by the end of the <laughs> show, we'll be more intimate. Um, well, I asked her about because she she wasn't content just to say religious people volunteer for charities, if that was news to anybody. But she had to couple it with a smear against Fabianism and social democracy. Now, as a matter of fact, well, they weren't the, there, Christopher. That's I'm all so I was sorry saying. to say I that without say the, no, the, effort, the, fa the efforts of Fabianism. But you're good at you, smears. The efforts of Fabianism. What's wrong with a smear? I, I don't. I'll get to the end of this sentence if it kills you. <laughs> <It'll>, um, <laughs> Um, the efforts, the efforts of socialists and social democrats to make sure that things like education and health do not depend upon private charity given by rich people and religious institutions to the deserving poor are the reasons why a lot of it's taken care of because it's taken care of. Hang because on, I wasn't we, we rich. have welfare and... But just a minute, there's another smear. I wasn't a rich person giving charity where it wasn't gone. And you have to understand the I didn't the say problem. that you were. Well, it seemed to come across I didn't that even way. imply that you were. No, the, the efforts of Fabianism and social democracy, socialism, were to make sure that these things didn't depend on the voluntary whim. Yeah, but they don't do and that And did now. all the idea of the deserving poor. Now, that's the first point. I know point. about The second point, right, well... Because it's so taken for granted now, I love to remind people, actually, this, meant, a long time this ago. meant social political action, as Hang you correctly say, as you quite correctly say, and I can help you out here by emphasising it, quite a while ago. Mm. That's why I said not to forget it. Now, to the point about religious activis activism, isn't it true, haven't you all heard, that Hamas does so well because it supplies social services? Are you going to say that it's the same is true for Hamas and Islamic Jihad? Never mind that they're religious. They distribute services where otherwise there'd only be secularism and corruption. Well, if you want to claim that, you can't just claim the charitable part of it, it seems to me. Mother Teresa, endlessly praised for work that most of the time she actually never did. I went to watch her very closely in Calcutta. You don't mind that she thinks that what Bengal and Calcutta mainly needs is a campaign, a clerical campaign, against birth control and family planning. Has anyone here ever been to Bengal and concluded that's what it really needs? <laughs> that's what she was really campaigning for, in case you're worried. But never mind. 
She gives a wonderful impression of being a charitable person. So what Indians need is more missionaries to cure poverty, when everybody knows there's only one cure for poverty, which is the empowerment of women, which means giving them some control over their reproduction. <laughs> name me, you name me a Catholic or Muslim charity that goes into the fields determined to secure the empowerment okay, of women. Well, let, let's and you'll see, have the ghost of a point. Let's see if Frank Up Brennan... Until now you don't. Let's see if Frank Brennan can uh, address that point. <laughs> well, Let's take it. I mean, people like Amartya Sen have argued very strongly and persuasively, like yourself, Christopher, that empowerment of women is the key to the development of peoples. Now, why don't we just drop the bagging and smearing and saying, all right, anyone who's out there, let's judge them by their fruits, whether they're atheists or whether they're Catholics or whatever, let's drop the bagging and smearing, let's say, right, we agree, what we've got to be working for is the empowerment of women. And there are people of religious dispositions who are passionately committed to that. And yes, there will be mistakes made in terms of policies and in terms of moral theories, but that's where I think in a pluralist society like Australia, we can have the respectful dialogue and we can work those things through as we do this evening. Wally Dully. Uh, just trying to figure out which aspect to take. I, I think... <laughs> I, I, but, uh, I guess that... Uh, the argument being made in that question is religion doesn't poison everything because there are people who yeah. do good works. I think, I think there's a, a real call that needs to be made for some honesty here on the part of religious people. And that is that, yes, lots of religious people do lots of very good things. Uh, and there was research published, I think, two years ago looking at Generation Y Australians that found that uh, those who were more religiously committed were more socially aware, they were more committed to the social good and all that sort of thing. And you can point to those studies and you can say that's wonderful. Um, but in a sense, I think you get caught in a reactionary argument, which is with all these people lining up saying, look how horrible religion is, you get a religious response that says, no, 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 we're good, look at these charities, turning a blind eye to not only some of the points that Christopher raises, but also the fact that there are religious charities that do a lot of that religious work for their own ends that, in my judgment, are actually quite nefarious at times. <laughs> religious can be, religions can be used as a cover and a pretext for violence and evil and all sorts of things. It can be instrumentalised in that way. It can also be instrumentalised in the opposite way. And so I kind of echo what, what Father Frank Brennan's said here, and that is that if you actually look to the substance of what people are doing, rather than asking the first question, is this a religious organisation or is this not? And then trying to make some judgement about their conduct and their motives on the basis of that. Then I think you get further down the track of making some kind of assessment. I think we're caught in these petty games about, well, you know, are religious people good or bad? Just get on with being good or being bad and let people make up their well, own. <laughs> I really think that's brilliantly phrased, but there is one more thing we have to say, just to do with the logical inference. Um, if Catholic charities were better than I say they were, or Muslim ones, it still wouldn't have anything to do with the truth or otherwise of their preachments. Any more than a group like Médecins Sans Frontières, for example, which would be my favourite uh, medical charity, or Amnesty International, which is completely secular, uh, proves that there is no God. I mean, it's, it's purely coincidental. That's an entirely separate argument. Well, but, well, but, the, but if the yeah, question but it just, is... It's, a, it's part of the premise that needs to be... No, but if the question is about... Okay, no, I'm going to interrupt you all, because uh, there, is, <laughs> there is a... Uh, there's a questioner, and uh, Christopher Hitchens obviously has uh, got a lot of attention uh, from our audience, and here's a question aimed directly at him. Oh, dear. Um, it's from Jessica Langrel. Uh, just another one to Mr Hitchens. Um, you typically stereotype religious people as dogmatic and fundamentalists. No, I don't. Um, how is this when people who listen to you um, feel as if you're the one being dogmatic and fundamentalist in your evangelical pursuit to convert the world to atheism. Well, I have to... I would have expected more applause for a cheap point like that. <laughs> um, that's more like... Now, that's more like what I call applause, Roger. Um, I will have to... Uh,